How's it going guys? In this tutorial, I'm going to be recoding this website Freightforum. And Freightforum is a website owned by myself and it was created about five years ago by um, one or two other programmers and they, they coded it for me. And at that time I was doing some CSS for it, some design and um, SEO, things like that. Um, but what I want to do is I want to come back to this website and I want to code it again from scratch rather than maintain the current code base. And I want to do it again with Code Igniter and jQuery and jQuery UI. Um, so basically, that's the decision I made, decided to do with this. And uh, we can go over to um, the code here. Well, I'll just show you what I have so far. Um, I have the top navigation. So we have our logo here, and um, this uh, has a background property. So that's you know changing based on whether you hover it over it or not. And I have. Um, we have all these, uh, these are actually just a tag links and when you hover over them um, we're getting this, uh, we're getting a drop down menu effect. So basically that's what we're going to talk about in this first video is just how to create this drop down and how I created this basic header. And so we can go over to the code here and um, I'm not going to go over how to install Code Igniter and stuff like that because um, I've done that in my Code Igniter series. But just know that um, this is all within the Code Igniter framework. Um, we have our home controller here, home.php, and this one is loading in these three different views right here. And this, when I use Code Igniter, this is my preferred way of doing it, which is um, I load the view three times, and then the first one is header, and then the footer, and then we have you know our main body uh, right here between them. So we can go over to um, our header.php right here, and you'll see we have, um, I'm using HTML5, actually this is, um, this whole file is the top part of HTML5 boilerplate and you'll so you'll see things like you know mod modernizer included and the CSS files and then we have our opening body tag and this uh, opening uh, div div tag with a class of uh, or with an ID of wrapper and that gets uh, finished off in footer.php you'll see I'm ending my um, my my div my wrapper div right there and then we end the body tag right here also inside the footer, we're including our JavaScript files. So we have jQuery here and plugins.js. If we create any plugins, we can put them in here. And also uh, main.js file, which I'm going to put all of my JavaScript inside. Inside the div with an ID of wrapper, I have my div with an ID of outer nav. And if we go over to the CSS here, um, we'll see the outer nav it has a width of 100%. And currently I have my wrapper div um, also set to, it's also a width of 100%. You know, it's taking, um, you know, its parent was the body and the body is 100% width. So all of its children are going to also have a width of 100% of their parent unless we specify it otherwise. So right now I just have this outer nav. It has a width of 100%. So that's going all the way across the, um, across the screen. And we have a height of 30 pixels and the background color and the padding. And that's how we get this um, blue going all the way across, which is what I want. Um, however, inside that one, we have I have my inner nav. And my inner nav is where I'm going to store you know, all of the elements of uh, um, this div, like the logo and all of these links. And this one is has a, a width of 980 pixels. And then I center that using uh, margin zero auto right here. And um, actually, this is not necessary here, right here. Okay, that's the shorthand, zero pixels auto. And it has a height of 30 pixels. If we go back to header.php here, we'll see inside the inner nav, the first thing we have is the logo. And the logo is a div, and it has a background property. This is how we're getting um, that uh, rollover effect. And um, it's inside a tags because I want it to be a link. So if we just um, go over to this one right here, if I right click right here and we inspect it, you'll see I have this um, div with the ID of logo and it has a height property and a width property and it has a background image. So when we hover over it, um, the background position is changing. So right now in its uh, non-hover state, we have a background position of zero minus 25 pixels. But when they hover, we're going to change that. So if I just push the up arrow here, um, you'll see that move, and you'll see the other one come in at 0 and 0 pixels. So I'll just put that back to uh, minus 25 pixels. 
and you'll see that when I hover over it, it's going to get that zero and zero uh, values, which is going to make it blue. And if we go over to the um, CSS right here, uh, we can see the code for that. So we have our logo right here, and it has a background. There's the background position there. And then when they hover over it or when it's active, like if they tabbed into it, um, the only change we're making is background position. And we set this second value from uh, minus 25 pixels, setting that to zero pixels. Let's go back to header.php now. And after the logo, I have this div with it, and it has an ID of dropdown nav. And dropdown nav is going to contain all of the um, spans and A tags. And if we go to the site here, that's all of these white ones on top here. From exchange, going all the way to network, and also register and login. All of those are housed inside this um, div with the ID of nav headers. And then we also have another div after that, which is called nav menus. And nav menus um, has all of these different ULs here, and they have uh, all of their list tags in it. Uh, which also have a tags in there and um, these are all of the drop down menus so when we uh, when we hover over these then they're going to show so the way that these are hidden to begin with um, in the CSS file here you'll see um, I've set their visibility to hidden so all of these ULs we're starting off with visibility hidden and depending on whether they um, you know roll over those uh, these spans or these a tags we're going to use jQuery to change that visibility uh, from hidden and change that to visible so we can see them. I just want to talk a bit about how I got these um, ULs to be positioned where they are. Um, the way I did that was um, I took this, U, um, this uh, nav menus ID and I gave that a position of relative. So if we go to the CSS file here, we'll see that uh, nav menus has a position of relative. And once we have this as a position of relative, then all of the different ULs here are going to get a position of absolute. So we're going to position them absolutely uh, relative to the nav menus um, div right there. And then for each of the different ones, uh, depending on its class, whether it's the exchange one or local quotes or whatnot, um, the only thing we need to change is the left value so that it lines up um, so it lines up with the uh, you know the span or the a tag that's above it. So um, yeah, we can go here. So you see over exchange, then that's coming right under it. Local quotes and local sites. And there's a lot of different ways to make these um, drop down menus. Um, I've heard that you can also do it just with CSS and not with JavaScript. But I know for this site, um, if the you this site is not going to support people that don't have JavaScript, it's going to use a lot of JavaScript in it. Um, so basically, I'm not supporting that. So I just just decided to use um, JavaScript to do this. And so you'll see that these are, are all positioned right under. If in the future um, these, you know, exchange got longer, added more text to it, all we'd need to do is, you know, increase the, uh, the left value slightly, you know, to move these left or right. And um, I think there's not too much else to talk right there. And we can go over to the JavaScript um, for the... Um, for the drop down menus. So first of all, I have everything wrapped in the document ready function uh, because we want to wait for the DOM to be ready before we operate on it. And then what I'm doing is all of those different span tags, um, the span tags are these ones from exchange going to network. Um, each time somebody mouse enters into one of those, um, I should mention mouse enter is usually a bit better than hover because as you're moving the mouse over something, uh, that hover event could be firing over and over again. But mouse enter is basically when it enters the element and then mouse leave is when it leaves the element. So I think these are going to be a little bit more uh, efficient rather than using um, hover and fade for when they you know leave the element. So for all of the span tags, uh, when they mouse enter here, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the class right here and I'm going to store that in LM class. And the way that I did this um, inside the header, you'll see that each one of those spans has a class of exchange or local quotes, you know, depending on the text that's inside it. And then this class also matches up with the class in the UL. So we have exchange here, and that's paired with exchange here. And local quotes paired with local quotes. So if we go back to the JavaScript file, um, what we do is when they go over that span tag, um, we grab the class. So we use that using this and then add our class. 
and I store that in this um, variable right here. And I also want to get the width in a pixel value. So if I use this CSS width, that is going to look something like um, 67 pixels or something. It's going to be a string value, and it's going to be um, it's what I, it's what I want with px and a string because I'm going to use that to set the CSS property later on. So um, that width is being stored inside this variable lm width right here. And then the next thing I need to do is find the matching UL. So we just grab that by going, uh, we grab the UL and then period, and then we concatenate on the class that we got um, from the spans above. Okay, so now we're selecting um, the appropriate UL. And then we just set the um, ULs, we set the um, visibility to visible because it was uh, hidden by default. And then we set the CSS min width to lm.width. And the reason why I did this is if we go over to the site here, um, you can see if I go over exchange here and I'm on the right side and you see these tests aren't very long. If I went down right here, then this would disappear because we wouldn't be over to the UL. So what I want is I want the UL's minimum width to be um, the same width as the you know A tag was above it. Just in case they come straight down on the right here, um, that's not disappearing. You'll see if I go too far to the right here, um, now that's gone. So after we've done that, we need to set what happens when they um, leave the element, when they leave that span. And here we have um, the same thing, uh, lm class, uh, we, where we're storing that class inside this variable again. And then uh, we're setting uh, the visibility to hidden on the UL that, um, that goes together with it. The next thing that I had to do was we needed to grab the UL. So um, when they are over this um, this A tag right here, and then they come down, well now they are they're leaving that A tag. Um, so you know it could disappear. And if I went up here, that disappears. But so they're leaving the A tag, but they're also entering the UL here. So we needed to write a bit of code for when they enter the UL. So you can see here um, whenever they enter one of the ULs. Um, when they mouse enter into it, this we set the th this dot CSS. We set the visibility to visible, just to keep that visible. And then when they leave that UL, then we set the visibility to hidden again. So you can see here um, we're over the A tag, and we have the mouse enter right here. And as we move down here, that is going to be a mouse out on the um, A tag, but it's going to be a mouse enter into the UL. So we just need to have code for both of those. And the result is this drop-down menu like this.